Happy Sabbath, everyone. And we want to welcome you once more to the Wellington SDA Live, where we, in the words of William Carey, we expect great things from God, and then we attempt great things for God. We welcome you to this platform. We hope you had a wonderful week. And again, proportionate to your trials and your struggles was the grace of God. He promised us that as our days, so shall our strength be. And I'm sure that there are so many different platforms you could have chose to give you allegiance to this time, but we thank you for stopping by our church's platform. And as you've logged on, whether you're a local or international, that you come expecting a blessing, and as you leave, you will leave with a blessing. To our regular members, wherever you are, we hope you stay safe. And as we see things a little bit subsiding a little bit more, and so we, we're hoping that sooner or very soon we'll be able to go back into our regular facility where we can continue our regular Sabbath worship. But until then, we are forced to use this platform to seek to encourage and inspire each other in the Lord as we work and wait and watch for the coming of Jesus. Friends, if you're logging on for the very first time, I want to encourage you guys to do subscribe to the church's YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, type in Wellington SDA, with the big W and red, and subscribe. As you subscribe, as we go live every week or during the week, You'll be notified by the live broadcast and you can also share it. And once you're finished, you stop by my channel. Um, type my name in Carlton Knott. Please subscribe, friends. We have a plethora, a host of sermons, different titles and concepts that are designed to help develop your whole man symmetrically. And you'll find these sermons on my, web, on my YouTube channel. Subscribe. Share the link. And as I upload these sermons on a weekly basis, I know that you will be blessed by the sermons. Again, friends, we believe that more is still accomplished by prayer than by preaching. And as long as Christians live, we should pray. It is only as we pray that we live. And if we desire others to pray for us, we must then cultivate the habit of praying for others. And so we have our three angels, voice of hope, to submit your prayer request, dial. Don't be afraid to dial. You can be anonymous. Dial 305-676-4113. Make your request audible. And our times of operation are mornings 5 a.m., Sundays through Saturday, midday 12 p.m., and that's from Sunday to Friday. And in the evening, we have 7 p.m., Mondays through Thursdays. Don't be afraid to sign on. And you can also participate in the discussions and the prayers of the saints. Again, friends, if you have not received a study guide or you desire a study guide for this particular series, email us at info at wellingtonsda.com or c.not at thefinalmovements.com and we will do our best to get these study guides out to you in a timely manner. Again, friends, we hope you've come with great expectancy and you've come to hear a word, you've come to study, you've come to be enlightened and inspired and even challenged. I believe that you're at the right place. We're going to have a word of prayer. Again, get your Bibles, friends, preferably the King James Version Bible for this particular series. If you don't have a lesson, then jot the, um, the, the answers down and then you can go back at your leisure and print the lessons out and fill them in, brothers and sisters. Let's be like the Bereans, amen? Um, again, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to move right into this morning's study session. So please pray with me. Most kind and loving Father in heaven, we are again gathered together in this fashion, Lord, not out of mere formality, but local or international, Near or far, we do see our own need, which is for a closer walk with you. And we pray that through the spoken word this morning, our lives may be transformed in the character of Christ. May you forgive us, O God, for, for our sins of omission and commission. May you cover us with Christ's righteousness. May you blot our sins from out the book. And as we open your inspired book, I pray even now, that you will bless us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. 
<clears throat> we are continuing our series, um, Desert Lessons, and we're on this dirty and dusty lesson. Lesson number 14, and this is entitled Quails or Manor. And this, because of the, you know, the, 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 the overwhelming information, I've decided to do this lesson maybe in two parts, maybe three if need. But it's a very, very important lesson, and I didn't want to rush it. I wanted to do justice to it, not to over burden you or overbore you with it, but give you enough so you can digest it as we go through. So, quails or manna. Now, our thematic text for this series, um, we should be able to quote it now, Romans 15, verse 4. For what whatsoever things are written aforetime, are written for our learning, that we through comfort of the scriptures, so that we through may might have hope, right? And friends, as we look around, the world can be a very, a very depressing and discouraging place. But as we spend time to open the word of God, we do can gleam hope and find encouragement. Our thematic quote is that we have nothing to fear for the future, except we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teachings in our past history. And so friends, again, I will continue to sound this and echo and re-echo it as we're in this series, that there are three chapters in the Bible that we are encouraged, we are admonished to read. Psalms 105, Psalms 106, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Why? Because these three chapters, they, it rehearses the history of ancient Israel. So we can learn from their mistakes, their follies, and their foolishness and not repeat them in our own particular life. Now, when last we left the children of Israel, they, had, they were on the borders of the wilderness. And God now led them in the wilderness. And friends, in and through, and the wilderness was a school of hard knocks. We've discovered it in the wilderness. They were tested and tried. It was in the wilderness that character is developed. And we've learned that this world is a wilderness, friends. And what God sought to do for them, he's now seeking to do for you and I. There is no getting around. We must all go through the wilderness and we must be challenged. And so we left them now in the wilderness of Succor. They had just came out of Red Sea Triumph and the problem day, they began to murmur but for water. And we know that God um, provided for them water. Now, as they moved on, now, friends, the Reformation now begins. God is now trying to detox them, to, to unburden them. And look how the saga now unfolds. Question number one in your hand says, now, if they were obedient, what did God promise not to put upon his people? So as they came through the bitter, the, the bitter waters, now God now made them a promise. Now all of God's promises are conditional. Now let's take our Bibles now to Exodus. We need our Bibles, friends, especially for this particular study, right? Exodus chapter 15, verse number 20. Friends, I appeal to you, friends, get your Bibles, friends. Mark your Bibles. Get these texts. Exodus 15, 26. Are we there? The scriptures declare, and I read, and he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and will do what is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments, keep all his statues, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptian for I am the Lord which healeth thee. So God promised them if they would be diligent if they would hearken to his commandments, his statutes, his laws, his, ordin his ordinances, fill in now, he would put none of the Egyptian diseases. Fill it in now. He would put none of the Egyptian diseases upon his people. The Egyptians suffered from a multiplicity of diseases, which in some cases were brought upon them through poor lifestyle, poor choices. So he promised, and friends, I want to say this, the promises that God made to ancient Israel back then, it is still binding, available to us today, modern Israel, yea, even the whole entire world. 
because God has not changed. And, and Hebrews tells us that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Friends, God is concerned about your health and your, and your well-being. You know, there are some people who are, only cons who, are, who are only your friend when you can do something for them. But God is concerned about our well-being at all times. As a matter of fact, number two says now, now what were some of the diseases that the Egyptians suffered from? You know, the Bible, it, it is so true, the biographies. The Bible lists a litany, a host of them. As a matter of fact, we see the same diseases today even in our world. If you go to Deuteronomy now, Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy, Moses now lists, and he should know he was in Egypt for 40 years as Pharaoh's grandson. So he was familiar with the sickness and the suffering that plagued his, quote unquote, his people back then. Now, in Deuteronomy 8, 28, 17, the scriptures declare now, the Bible says now, the Lord, the Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt with the emeroids, with the scab, with the itch, itchy and scratchy, <laughs> whereas thou cannot be healed, the Lord will smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of the heart. Friends, that is the book right there. Fill it in now. He promised he would not put the botch. The botch would not be upon him. That just sounds botchy. <laughs> if I say to you, you say to me, not, if I say to you, I'm sick, and I say, what do you have? I say, I have the botch. You say, boy, that don't sound too good. It's not. He promised them that they would not suffer from hemorrhoids or hemorrhoids. Lord have mercy. Hemorrhoids. Then he promised them that they would not suffer the scab. The scab. The scab. These are all diseases. He promised them they would not suffer from the itch. When you have an itch, you got to itch that bad boy. Itch. But also, also madness, mental diseases, mental disabilities. Are you with me, friends? Madness, the mind, and also blindness. And did you know that there are diseases or deficiencies? As a matter of fact, it is said that zinc deficiency, if it is depleted, can lead to blindness. Blindness and the one that really, that really, really, really just caught my attention was this one, the astonishment of the heart. Friends, that's heart attack. As far as Egypt was concerned, the diseases that are plaguing society, yea, even plaguing the remnant church, were the diseases from which the Egyptians suffered from. The botch, the emeroids, the scab, the itch, the madness, blindness, and astonishment of the heart. And by the way, all these diseases are lifestyle. All they are brought upon from poor lifestyle. As a matter of fact, the matter of fact, archaeologists have excavated the bodies of mummies. And these are they have found out that the diseases, the Egyptians suffer from heart disease, uh, cancer, arthritis, diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, rheumatism, and even STDs, friends. Nothing at the Solomon, Solomon says, ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new, friends. As a matter of fact, when you go back and study the Egyptians, their diet consisted of a high protein. And not from plants, they got their proteins from, from animals. A high fatty diet, right? And I know oftentimes we, they tend to paint them skinny, but they weren't. They suffered from serious obesity. And these are the diseases upon which God says, I will not put upon my people if we hearken diligently. Now, so here we see, friends, God led them out. 2.3 million people. Now, look at this now, friends. Number three now, in an, in an attempt to save, his, to save his people and preserve longevity, what did God introduce in the movement. Now, friends, Dr. King said longevity has its place. Nothing wrong with longevity, living a long life. God now wanted to preserve their longevity, so God now introduced something in the movement. As a matter of, and again, friends, I say, what God introduced to them, he's seeking to introduce to you, me, and our family. He introduced what we call now, fill it in, he introduced health reform. 
health reform. The first reform that God placed in the movement as they came out of Egypt in the wilderness, God was seeking to tame, to temper, to affect the health of his people. Now, God is the great, he made man, he's the great physician. So he should actually know what man needs. And friends, what a hard time they gave God. They gave God a hard time. And friends, we are giving God a hard time today. As a matter of fact, you can write this text down. 1 Corinthians 10.31, the Apostle Paul says, when we think of health reform, we must not think too narrow. We must think very broad. 1 Corinthians 10.31, the Apostle Paul says, for whatsoever you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, you must do all to the glory of God. Therefore, not in your handout, health reform is a big subject covering far more than our diet. And some preach health reform too narrow. We must preach it broad. Whatsoever is inclusive, it includes exercise, recreation, work, rest, sleep, even dress. While health reform is closely related to our spiritual life, it is not the gospel. Now, health reform is a part of the gospel, but it is not the gospel. Friends, I say we can't exercise our way to heaven. We can't rest our way to heaven. We can't dress. We can't eat. No, friends, if you and I get to heaven, it will be surely, surely on the mercies of Jesus Christ alone and his grace. And all that we do visibly to our fellow man is an outgrowth, is an appreciation for what Jesus has done. In other words, obedience then becomes a byproduct of grace. The fruit of grace is obedience. Are you with me, friends? So we are not here saying that we can eat, dress, drink, or with heaven by no means, friends. But friends, as stewards, we ought to take care of our bodies. As a matter of fact, if you rent a car from Avis or Budget, are you at liberty to tint the car, to put rims on the car, to change the stereo, to lower the car, to put some 22s on the car? No, friends, just as they give it to you, you are, at, you are required to give it back to them. If you got it with a full tank of gas, full tank of gas, put it back with a full tank of gas. Friends, so God gave us these bodies and it is our job to preserve it. So God now introduced health reform. Now, friends, I think I spoke on him, Dr. Clive M. McKay, PhD, medical doctor, and he was a longtime professor of nutrition at Cornwall University. Now, friends, this man is not a Seventh-day Adventist. I don't know what his religious affiliation was, but this man, as a medical doctor, and again, I'm no medical doctor, I'm a novice. I just read and try the best to do what I can do, but he was qualified and board certified. Now, this man, in all his studies, he came across three books. A book entitled Ministry of Healing, a book entitled Councils on Health, and a book entitled Councils on Diets and Food. Right? The latter two are compilations, but the other one is actually a book. Right Now, friends, let me say this. If you want to get the most balanced perspective you can on the subject of health reform, how you want to take care of your body and maximize life to its full potential while giving God glory, I encourage you guys to get these three books. Friends, these three books maximize longevity. These three books are the, are, are, the, are the authority, along with the Bible, on health reform. Friends, it does not get any better than these three books. As a matter of fact, look what he says after he read the book, having never met the author because she had died a long time before he came on the scene. But as an honest as an honest man, and you know, when, when one takes on the profession of a medical doctor, it's a profession of integrity. It's a profession of honesty. Now today, unfortunately, medical doctors have now prostituted their profession, where they're no longer concerned about your health. It's about lining the pockets of Medicaid and drug people. They want to medicate you to death. But he was an honest man. 
and the times now calls for honesty. We can't now deceive people as doctors telling the truth, right? Look what he says now. So now please read, not in your hand that now. He says, as he surveyed the landscape of these three books, look what he says now. As near as one can judge by the evidence of modern nutritional science, her LNG White extensive writings on the subject of nutrition and health in general are correct in their conclusions. Correct. He's affirming what the woman written wrote. Go ahead now. This is doubly remarkable. Not only was most of her writing done at a time when a bewildering array of new health views, good and bad, were being promoted, but the modern science of nutrition, which helps us to check on views and theories, had not yet been born. Wow. Even more singular, Mrs. White had no technical training in nutrition or in any subdivision of science that deals with health. And she didn't. She didn't. Look what he said now, right? When one reads works such as by Mrs. White as Ministry of Healing or Councils on Diet and Foods, uh -huh. he is impressed by the correctness of her teachings in the light of modern nutritional science. One can only speculate how much better health the average American might enjoy, even though he knew almost nothing of modern science, if he would but follow the teachings of Mrs. White. There it is, friends. There it is. And the Bible says you believe a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. And while, while those are stoning the prophet, here is a man who is affirming the prophet. And friends, I want to say this. It doesn't get any better than these three books. You don't have to, 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 to spend your money on, on things that, 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 don't, that don't inspire. These, this is the real McCoy. If you get these three books, preferably go on Google, go on Amazon, paperback or hardback, whatever your forte is, you get these books and read them, friends, and follow them. I, I guarantee you, longevity by the grace of God will be yours and your, your higher powers will now be brought into activeness. Now, so here we see now, friends, that God sought to introduce health reform. Now, when we think about health reform, again, we must cover it very broad. Health reform, right? Right? It includes subjects like health reform now, sunlight. They got plenty of that in the wilderness, boy. Right? Exercise. They walked everywhere they went. Them were some fit people. Talk about calves and biceps and triceps. They were lean. And the Bible says they were not a feeble one in the tribe. I'm going to cover that next, on next Lord's Day. Right? They had plenty of rest. They had no movies to go to. They had no stage show. They had no summer fest. You're not hearing me. They had no sizzling, sizzling in the park or saggle to the east or Woodstock. They never had that. When the sun go down, you go to bed. I believe that light has been a great curse to society. It should have been a blessing. Friends, if there's no light, you will go to bed. But we stay up at all hours of night, right? Rest. They had plenty of rest. And they went to bed before 10 o'clock. I knew that. God made sure that, friends. Then they had plenty of fresh air. That sea breeze, would, they had plenty of and fresh air purif purification. They had plenty of water. They, they, didn't drink, they never drank soda pop or Budweiser. You not hear me. No, or Heineken or boom. That thing will kill you dead. That thing is laced with caffeine, not to mention Red Bull and Monster. They didn't have that. They drank water. I wonder who bought the filter system. Was it Ziffer Hill? No. That water from the rock was pure. God made sure that it, didn't have it had everything they needed, friends. They had water. Water cleansed the tissue. And then they had to learn to trust in God. Right? They also had to practice temperance. Now, what is temperance? Temper. Temper your tone. Now, we're told in the book, not in your hand, I jot it down, Patriarchs and Prophet, she said this, true temperance teaches us to dispense entirely from that which is from everything hurtful. So once you know something is bad for you, cut it off. And what else? And judiciously, and use judiciously that which is helpful. So true temperance teaches us to dispense entirely from that which is 
hurtful and use judiciously that which is helpful. Now let me give you a case in point. So in the wilderness, God was trying to bring about true temperance, friends. Right? And temperance is one of the fruits of the Spirit. You can never be patient unless you've been temperate. And sometimes we want to bypass temperance 101 and jump to patience 102. Right? Proverbs, jot this text down, 25, 6, 16. The Bible says now, now this is the most biblical, balanced, practical definition of temperance you can ever get. Proverbs 25, 16 says, Hath thou found honey? Is honey good? Yes. Eat so much as sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therein and what? Vomit it. This is temperance. You found honey, eat it. So in other words, what the text is saying, when you find the good stuff, eat it, but don't eat too much of it because it'll make you sick. And too much honey will get your big toe cut off. Diabetic. Right? So this is a biblical definition for what true temperance is. So here we see, when we think of health reform now, getting sunlight, friends, and I appeal to you, we need to get the sunlight. Sunlight is good. Is that vit vitamin D? Vitamin D and all kinds of vitamins you get, right? Exercise. Brothers and sisters, we need to be exercising. Let's move, says Michelle Obama. You need to go out there at least 20 minutes per day. And too many of us, we are sluggish. And I don't care how much you juice. You could juice till the cows come home. Juicing will not make up for a lack of exercise. 20 minutes per day is sufficient. A brisk walk. Work the lungs. Exercise. Lift some weights, some squats, some dips, some lunges, some calves. Too much jiggly right here. Firm the thing the Rasta man said. Firm it up. Firm and strong. Is that right? All right? All these things help to strengthen the, the symmetry of man. No, we're not trying to go to go and be Hulk. No, that's a different thing. But man ought to be toned, man. Be able to have some muscle on your body. A little six-pack here and there. You know what I'm saying? Right? And again, we emphasize you need to go to bed before 10 o'clock. If you do, they say you get an extra hour of sleep. Right? Plenty of air. I know we live on AC, but you need to get a, you need to get at least crack the windows and have a fresh flow of air going through your house. That air removes impurities in the bathroom, in those foul socks, in the hamper. It removes impurities. Right? We need to drink more water. We need to drink a lot more water, brothers and sisters. Right? Remove these sodas from your children's diet. Give them water. Water never kill anybody. Water cleans the tissue loosens the stool as a matter of fact the veins click um, crave water and if they can't get it they'll begin to pull from other places as a matter of fact we were born and we swam in water before we came here and a large percent of our body made up of water 70 percent so since we need water right and again we need to learn to trust in god the bible says cursed is the man that put his trust in the arm of flesh. And we're told sometimes God allows people to fail us. So we stop looking to man and look to God. Moses says, David says, promotion don't come from the east or from the west. It comes from God. God opens door. God closes doors. And what God has for you is for you. Let us learn to trust in God and stop trusting in the system. The system will fail and it is is failing and if you've never learned to trust in God now what you're gonna do when the horses are drumming the earth and then we see temperance now and then another aspect we focus on now is diet now friends we're gonna focus on these lectures primarily on the diet because that is what we find in Genesis Exodus G Genesis chapter Exodus chapter 15 now follow me now friends when they came out of Egypt, that was the type. We are now in the anti-type. One of the very first thing 
that God had to get a get a uh, get get under control of 2.3 million people was their diet. That's the very first reform we find in the book of Exodus. And so, friends, as you have come out of Egypt, as you now have been enlightened as to what is happening, and as you have made your move towards Jesus, the very first thing God will do, if he has done already, he's going to seek to change your appetite. He's going to deal very severely and swiftly with you because your appetite is key in getting out of the wilderness alive. As a matter of fact, we're told this, not in your handout, but it's in that book, Counsels and Diets and Food. Look what a wise God did now. Please read now, The Controlling Appetite. The controlling power of appetite will prove the ruin of thousands. Uh-huh. When, if they had conquered on this point, they would have had moral power to gain the victory over every other temptation of Satan. Did you get that, saints? All right, keep on reading now. But what? But those who are slaves to appetite will fail in perfecting Christian character. And friends, we ain't going nowhere without character. But to hell. As a matter of fact, you're going to have a character in hell. The character of the devil. Right? And here now, as we, as we near the close of time, the end of the eon, the end of the world, Satan's temptation to indulge appetite will become more powerful and more difficult to overcome. And friends, look at the number of, of food shows that you see on television. And these things are schemes of the devil to divert you. You will sit down and watch a man cook, fry, bake, steam, boil that which is an abomination. And you will not sit down and read your Bible for an hour. Says it is a sign that you have a decrepit soul. I gotta tell you the truth, friends. All right. As a matter of fact, we are told whatsoever receives your first affection and more of your T-I-M-E then becomes your God. You're not hearing me. You don't want to hear me. As we near the close of time, Satan turn up the thing. And so the more people indulge in appetite, the more difficult will they be able to overcome. The, the sins, generational sins that have plagued generation from generation. And God made us so God knows what makes us tick. He understands how to balance the thing. And so what he did now, he actually now withhold from them that which they love so freely in Egypt. And he sought to curb their diet. And what he did for them, he wants to do for you. Now let's look at the origin, its origin now of health reform. Did the principles of health reform originate in the wilderness? Did they? No. No. Fill it in now. It originated in the Garden of Eden. So, again, for this session, we're going to lay a biblical framework as to how we got to where we are, where our, 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 our diet, in most cases, largely is composed of carcass dead animals how now health reform was in the beginning as a matter of fact let us now look at the diet before sin let's go to genesis now genesis chapter 129 here we see god made man the original man and god laid down a diet for man and if man had not sinned all of his posterity because the command was multiply and be fruitful, or vice versa, would have subsided on this. Genesis 120, the Bible says now, and God, and God said, behold, Adam, I have given thee every herb. And this herb is not ganja. It's not marijuana. I have given you every herb bearing seed. Friends, I tell you, if you're going to eat fruits, make sure it has seed in it. As a matter of fact, God never made a seedless fruit. Right? And there was a time where banana had seeds in it. Today I don't know what they have in it, right? Yeah. Which is upon the face of the earth. Every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. Now meat is not flesh here. Food. Right? 30 says now, 
but every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein is life I have given every green herb for meat it was so so here we see now both man and beast ate the same thing Adam didn't eat the beast and the beast didn't eat Adam right so this was the original diet so the original diet before sin from these texts and other texts we can gleam was made up of filling it now made up of um uh, nuts nuts or oh, I didn't open up fruits nuts and grains this was the original original diet for man this was what God intended for man to live on this diet produced maximum optimum level longevity note we are told in the same book that that doctor recommended look what she said now please read now God gave God gave our first parents the food he designed that the race should eat. Uh -huh. It was contrary to his plan to have the life of any creature taken. So there was no barbecuing, jerk, manish water, cocoa soup, none of that stuff in Eden. No, no, sorry, Bob. Please read. There was what? There was to be no death in Eden. There was no death in Eden. No death in Eden, right? The fruit of the trees in the garden was the food man's wants required. There it is. So God made man. If Adam and Eve had not sinned, then this would have been the diet. Now, friends, let me say this. Let me jump the gun. I appeal to you, saints, get used to this diet. Because I'm going to show you. At the end of this, there is a marriage feast that we're going to go to. No, we're going to go to a wedding reception. And all is invited. I wonder what's going to be served there. Number five now. Now, apart from the dietary laws, what other laws did God institute for a man's health? Now, apart from eating, we find in the Garden of Eden eight laws of health. And we covered them early in the reform, but I'm going to give you some text and context now. Now, these laws appear today under various acronyms, such as um, we have New Start and we may have I Like Godly Trust, right? So fill in now. We had Godly Trust. Godly trust, fill it in our G, and that's found in Genesis 2.17. Open air, Genesis 1, chapter 6 and 7. Daily exercise, Adam had to till the garden, Genesis 2.15. Then we had S for sunlight, sunlight, Genesis 1.16. Proper rest, Adam didn't oversleep, he went to bed on time, Genesis 2.3. Lots of water, there, were only, there was one river forehead that flew in the Garden of Eden, right? He was always temperate and nutrition. So here we see these eight laws of health along with a diet, friends, I believe you, me, can maximize your potential in life. As a matter of fact, we're told from that another book that the doctor recommended, Ministry of Healing. Please read it or not. There are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there is only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life, and a firm trust in God are remedies for the want of which thousands are dying. Yet these remedies are going out of date because their skillful use requires work that the people do not appreciate. Friends, here we see, friends, God's healing system does not tax the body. Have you ever noticed <laughs> that when they are promoting these powerful drugs on television, it is so skillfully orchestrated? They usually have these Caucasian families or what you call them um, mixed families. The wife may be Caucasian. Or, or vice versa, and you have these mixed race kids, and you know, everything is nice, and they say, take, take Yumara, and it will, it will, you know, loosen you up, and blah, 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 and then they say now, but it may cause internal bleeding, and you see the guy just dancing and running, it may cause gum decay, right, and it may cause early blindness, and, and they list all these negatives, but how they do it, friends, 
is as if you're just enamored by the choreography. And you take that drug, that stuff will make you be constipated. As a matter of fact, they, she says that they tax the system. There's not a drug that is made that doesn't have side effect. You, you show me one. There's not a drug that's made or approved by FDA that doesn't have... Now, I'm not here telling you, I'm no medical doctor. I'm not, here, I'm not here telling you to dispense with your drugs. I'm not saying that. What I'm simply saying, brothers and sisters, you must reason from cause to effect. What has caused you to be on that drug? Go back and change your dietary lifestyle. Live in harmony with these eight laws of health. And I believe, friends, by and by, you can, with your doctor's um, authority, you can dispense with these drugs. Friends, this is a mo it's a money-making thing, right? And so here we see, friends, that pure ear, these are the remedies that God people should feast on. Now, so here we see the diet before sin was fruits, nuts, grains. Again, friends, this is just a, we're laying a foundation for next Lord's Day, part two. Now, let's now transition to the diet after sin. Once sin entered e Eden through the medium of the serpent, through Eve, and then by Adam, look what happened now. God now was now forced to modify man's diet. To, he had to modify it because of the penal punishment that Adam had, 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 had received at the hand of God because of his sin. Now because of sin now, what amendment was made to man's original diet? Genesis 3 now. Genesis 3 verse 17 says now, right? And unto Adam, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hath eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground. From out of it thou wast taken, thus thou art, and thus shalt thou return. Now, because the ground was cursed now, Adam now had to sweat. When one sweats, one actually depletes what? Wait. <laughs> My daughter said, wait, right? Minerals are depleting. Well, you do lose weight sometimes if you work right. So I guess she's partially right, right? So Adam now and Eve, before Eden, they, they didn't have this. But here they see now they're sweating. Minerals, sodium are being depleted. So God now had to find a way to replenish that now. And so here we see now one more thing was added to man's diet now. The component of vegetables and it is the most difficult thing for us to eat. I read somewhere that when if, if, if that you know the Gerber babies you know the boy they'll eat that they'll eat that um that that peach all day but them green peas they we just have a distaste saying that listen I have to start I, I drink my vegetables I listen I struggle eating them I know it's good for me and I eat them but boy I started juicing mine I got me a, a juicer what's the juicer called omega-3 omega that boy oh, that thing ring everything out but it's a good juicer I juice mine Right? So, vegetables were added. Veggies. Now, you must understand now, friends. This is imperative now. No further change was authorized by man's food by God for the next 1,656 years. Now, change was made, but it was not by God's authority. So therefore, all the patriarchs, Methuselah, Noah, and Enoch, Seth, who came after Adam's lineage and who were dubbed righteous, this was the diet that these men and women subside upon. Right now. Then, that's in Genesis chapter 3. Then now we skip to Genesis chapter 6, the days of Noah. And the Bible says that the... There was an excess of wickedness and violence just like today. Now, friends, 
One of the reasons why that the violence increased unprecedentedly, like today, was because they, they had altered their diet without God's permission. Now, same author, I'm reading from a book called Third Spiritual Gifts, page 6-3. The chapter is entitled, a powerful book, Crimes Before the Flood. The sins and the atrocities that they were committing before the flood came. Look what she said now. Please read the not. The more men. The more men multiplied wives to themselves, the more they increased in wickedness and unhappiness. Uh -huh. If one chose to take the wives or cattle or anything belonging to his neighbor, he did not regard justice or right. But if he could prevail over his neighbor by reason of strength, or by putting him to death, he did so, and exulted in his deeds of violence. All right, so they glorified violence, like today, friends, like today. Now, look at this point. This point is critical and crucial to this study now. Please read now. They loved to destroy the lives of animals. They used them for food. There it is. Now, God had not given them permission. The, per the, the permission was fruits, nuts, grains, and veggies. But they had jumped the gun. This is before the flood. Please read now. And this increased their ferocity and violence. Uh -huh. And caused them to look upon the blood of human beings with astonishing indifference. Wow, friends. It's like today. It's amazing, friends. You can see a man getting beat up. And instead of trying to intervene, what do you do? You take out your cell phone. Mm. And you try it. You record it and you upload it, and you try to make money off it, and you say, like it. Instead of trying to intervene, friends, we, glo we glory now in brutality. And I'm saying, friends, this thing can be traced back to a large consumption of animal meat. I'm telling you, friends, I'm telling you. Now, she goes on to say, the inhabitants of the old world, please read, this is from... Council doesn't food now, she says. Uh -huh. The inhabitants of the old world were intemperate in eating and drinking. All right. They would have flesh meats, although God had given them no permission to eat animal food. All right. They ate and drank to excess, and their depraved ap appetites knew no bounds. All right. They gave themselves up to abominable idolatry. Mm -hmm. They became violent and ferocious All right. and so corrupt that God could bear with them no longer. As men multiplied upon the face of the earth after the flood, they forgot God and corrupted their ways before him. Intemperance in every form increased to a great extent. There it is, friends. Intemperance. And friends, it got so bad when we get to Genesis chapter 6. God himself said this, it repented the Lord that he had made man. God was sorry. It grieved him in his heart. And because they would not stop, they were fierce. They were very defiant. And that fierceness and defiance could be traced back. Yes, sin spirals, but it could be traced back, friends, to the consumption of animal. God says in verse 7, I will destroy man. Here it is. Whom I have created from this earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and fowls of the air, for it repented me. In other words, I am sorry I made man. So what then? God now called Noah found grace. And I do not believe that Noah was subsiding on that diet. I believe he was on fruits, Nuts, grain, he was a just man. God told Noah to build an ark in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And in 7-2, an instruction was given now to preserve the food. So here I see Noah. While Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, I believed Mrs. Noah and Mrs. Methuselah, right? Uh, and Mrs. Shem and Mrs. Ham were busy um, gathering drying, canning, preserving food to, that would last them through the common crisis when they could not buy and sell under the flood, friends. Did you get that, friends? Friends, did you get that, friends? Friends, did you get that? Ladies, it is time for you now to start learning these art. 
of canning and food preservation. I'm telling you, friends, we are going to regret that we wasted our time watching foolishness. If you're going to watch something on YouTube, at least watch something that is profitable that will assist you in the coming crisis. Learn the art of canning. Learn the art of drying. Learn the art of preserving food without refrigerator or somebody say fridge. My cousin said to me <laughs> yesterday, I laughed. He said he's going to go down by courts and trust a fridge. <laughs> and I said, we don't have a refrigerator. You know, he said, no, a fridge. Fridge we want, fridge. Friends, we're not going to have refrigerators. If you believe Revelation 13, you can't buy and sell. Unless you got some solar, well, how are you going to preserve them beans? Friends, you see why it is needful now not to waste our time? So the food was preserved. Now, bear in mind, for himself and his family. So now, look what happened now, right? So after that now, Noah, right? Where am I? God gave Noah instructions now. Watch it now. God, gave, God now gives Noah instructions with regarding to preserving the life of the animals. Now, Noah didn't understand why God gave him this, but Noah obeyed. Noah was told by God, fill it in now, you must take seven pairs of clean animals. Seven pairs of clean animals. And then you must take two pairs of unclean. Now, why the five difference. Why I'm going to show you why why not take seven pairs of clean? Seven seven. Why you take seven pairs of clean and two pairs of unclean? Why not seven seven? Now, let me say this, friend. FYI, you know, dinosaurs were real. They were real. But one of the reasons why we don't see dinosaurs roaming the earth today. Now, if you believe the book and the prophet. If you go off in some quagmire, some science, then that's you. We are told that the antediluvians were very, very smart people. They were intelligent. As a matter of fact, listen, they came off the mind of Adam. Adam named all the animals. Some of us can't even name 10 species of bugs. There are so many different species of lizards. Adam named all of them. Now, after sin, they began to tamper with the genes they would splice the genes they were so advanced and because of their splicing the word now is called amalgamation there was an amalgamation taking place right of in the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom and what happened the amalgamation now they would just like for instance we do it today like how do you make a mule you impregnate a horse with a donkey that's crossbreeding and you get a mule that's how mules are made now so they began to crossbreed animals and dinosaurs were created i believe that now we're told she told us that the only animals that were brought in the ark quoting were the ones that god had made so there were other animals that God didn't create, which were from man's product, man's production, that they were destroyed. And that is why you will find fossils. I'm not disbelieving the fact that there were dinosaurs and there were all these other sores, but God didn't make them. These were a product of amalgamation. You'll find that in the same book, Spiritual Gifts. So here we see seven and two clean. Now, the flood came. 40 days, it rained, it rained, it rained, it rained, it rained some more, and it rained some more. Friends, it rained, it rained, it rained, it rained, it rained, and the Bible says in Genesis 7.21, all the flesh died that moved upon the earth. Fowl, cattle, beasts, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, every man. Friends, everything died, even the vegetation. The only food that Noah had to keep him and friends, I'm belabeling the point because Christ says as it was in the days of Noah, if a flood is coming, where is your arky ark? The, that which kept them in the ark, 
was that which they had preserved. If Noah had said, sure, God will take care of the eye. Yeah, bless his name. He would have starved and his family. And not just that, the Messiah, the Messiahship, the plan of salvation hanged upon Noah's faithfulness because everybody else died. Friends, you see why when God speaks, it's best to listen and you have people who are sitting down waiting for the general conference to tell them to buy their country home. They are waiting for the Sabbath school quarterly to do a, a quarter on country living. Friends, we are waiting for some grand thing to happen to us before we will believe where is your faith. God has told us, prepare, prepare, get the book Country Living and read, friends. It is time, I'm, I'm telling you, in one of these days, you're not going to see me in this spot. Abracadabra. Not getting out of Dodge. I'm not going to be like that man in Jerusalem who warned others and were caught in the siege he foretold of. That, that is foolish. So since I'm appealing to you, friends, if you can, you need to start considering how this world is coming to an end. And all your degrees you're getting will not mean a hill of beans. Listen, you go, listen, I, I keep on telling you, I have this thing with the Holocaust. If I ever got a degree, a PhD, it would have to be in Jewish. I'm just fixated. It, 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 it blows my mind how them people just, they just sat and watched the Third Reich just closing on them. And they got the news. Now some were prudent. They got a dodge. They came to America. They, they went other places. Others say, oh no, Italy will help us. Italy, France, France, they, France gave in without even, they just surrendered. France, and look what happened to those Jews. And you know what happened? When Hitler came, all those philosophers, PhDs, they went to Treblinka, Auschwitz, or Seigeborg. Only those who survived what they call essential workers, dressmakers, shoe cobblers. Hitler didn't need no philosopher. The essential workers survive, friends. What am I trying to say? Friends, we have been told things are about to shift. Shifting is taking place. And we're sitting down just watching. It's like we're stupefied. Let us, let us learn from Mrs. Noah. And I'm speaking to all the Mrs. Noahs out there. You need to start learning these things because a time is coming where that degree on your wall will not mean a hill of bean. You're going to need now practical skills. We're getting ready to go from an iPod to a P-Pod. Since I appeal to you as your friend, let us get ourselves ready, 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 ready. All right now. So here we see now. The diet is now amended one more time diet before sin after sin now the diet God now has to adjust the diet after the flood now when Noah came out of the ark we learned we know all the vegetation died so Noah had a problem Noah never ate meat Noah and his family subscribed to the diet that God gave to Adam after sin he was faithful so God what am I going to eat oh you see, you God, you say you're tricky fire. That's why you told me to bring those seven clean animals and two unclean. Now you see, friends, because if I had only brought two pairs of clean and I ate them, there'll be no more clean. You see, you see the wisdom of God. Now I said, God, you see, you see, you're tricky fire, the God. I'm clicking it now. Yes. God now gave Noah permission to eat meat. Right? So, friends, here we see now, friends, right? That God told Noah, right? God told Noah to eat, right? Genesis 9 says now, every moving thing that liveth upon the, every moving thing now, moving thing that liveth upon the face of the earth, for you, even the green herb, I have given things. But the flesh of the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, ye shall not eat. So they could eat the flesh, but not with the blood. That's the principle. Now, so here we see, Probably should have jotted it down. I don't know. I think I, you know, I actually left out a whole chunk of thing, but it's okay. The diet now after sin, after the flood, 
we see fruits, nuts, grains, but here we see now vegetables, here we see flesh. There should be a spot for flesh. I don't know what happened. We have a huge problem, Houston, but I know, <laughs> so it goes sometime, right? But jot it in. This what now, so God now gave man permission to eat flesh or meat or chicken or beef. 1600 years after. Now, God gave man permission to eat all these things. To eat flesh or meat. But it had to meet a few biblical requirements. Now, friends, let me say this. If you are consuming flesh, meat, make sure at least it meets these requirements. If it does not, Houston, we have a problem. I'm telling you, friends. One, fill it in. The animals had to be clean. Now, not clean because they didn't take a bath. No. Clean based on the cleansiness list that we get in Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14. Moses lists a whole list of animals that God says were unclean. They had to chew the cud and so forth and, and the hoof. You can read it, right? Now, today, the food and drug, FDA, you know, FDA is our, is our, is our, is our great physician. If, the F, if food and drug don't pass it, I don't want it. As a matter of fact, I was down in Jamaica the other day, you know, a season ago, and right when you come off White Horse, White Horse to get to where, where I live, there's a corner. It's a sharp corner, but that's where they sell a whole lot of mangoes. And listen, you got to get it there, man. And they, the guy them have them roots and them bitters and all kind of stuff. It's strong back, money up. So my cousin pulled over. I always stop, and I like to get some mangoes. So when I, when I, <laughs> I stopped, it was so funny. There was this, this, this Caucasian man I'd stop. So I stop and, and he's getting served. And so I'm waiting now. I'm kind of looking. And so the guy said, he said to the guy, what is this? And he said, this is what you call strangbok. He says, what's in it? And the guy lists about 15 different roots in it. The thing was dark. It was like five grand. This is a strong strangbok. Talk about this. If you have any... Any, any problem, boy? This stuff puts some life in your blood flow. You know what the man said? He asked the guy, is it FDA regulated? And the man said, Webset? Now, come on, this guy don't know FDA. Webset? And I chuckled. Obviously, there was no label on it. There was no dosage, no how much milligram. No, no, it was just dark. So... <laughs> The guy, the, the, the Caucasian man asked the guy, so how you know what to drink? I said, just, just drink, man. <laughs> I said, I laugh. I said, just drink. There was no regulation. But friend, what am I, what, what, what am I trying to say? Was that, was that bad? May not be. But some people, the only thing that they will consume is if FDA states good for consumption. Now, friends, FDA approve organic pork. Are you going to consume that? No, friends. So it's not clean based on what the food and drug. I'm not here knocking the food and drug. That's for them. But that's not my governing. This is my governing compass. Right? Now, so here we see now it had to be clean based on the description given by Moses. That's number one. Number two now, friends. No fat should be in the meat or eaten. No fat, zero fat, because in the Bible, fat was a, a kind of sin. And they would burn the fat to symbolize what sin was. So God is very clear. Leviticus 7, the Bible says, Whosoever eateth the fat of the beast, of which man offer for offering unto fire, the Lord that so eateth it shall be cut off. Here it is, friends. And you know why God, and you see, God knew this. Friends, you know why God says don't eat fat? As a matter of fact, you're gonna, so that meat had to be scraped out. That meat had to be separated. The fat had to be cleared off. When you go to the supermarket, friends, there's fat all through that meat. There's, and you fry that fat. You consume the fat. What happens now, 
The fat is like a brewer. You know what a brewer is? The other day I was on my balcony and I had my hiking boots that I took to Jamaica. So when I go in my farm, I put on my hiking boots and so forth and a brewer stuck to my boot. A little brewer. They call it brewer. Right? It wasn't a maca. It was like a little brewer. And when I, when I was cleaning my way, I said, look at this. You came to America, boy. You didn't come here. You came here illegal. You know, you, you caught on. And I had to pick off the burrs. These were some Jamaican burrs that I got from my back of my farm. Burrs. You know, as the burrs stuck to my shoes, the fat sticks to the arteries. And this is a normal artery. Over the years of a heavy fat, 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 the arteries they close. And then, knock, knock, Dr. Stroke, Mr. Diabetes, and Sister Heart Attack. And when they come, they, you can't tell them you're not home. They, they come to cripple. And that's what the Egyptians suffered from. And so God knew this. Friends, your arteries can never be clogged eating too much banana. Never. It's a high fatty. That's why the fat should not be eaten, friends. And not just the fat, there are certain oils you should cook with. <laughs> I was down there in Jamaica. You know, I tell you, boy, it's because you're educated. So my cousin's cooking. And I, I specifically, when I go down, I brought down that, I bring the pink salt. I said, man, the other salt will kill you dead, man. So, you know, he's not a, he's not health conscious. So whatever. So he used the salt just to appease me. So then now, I specifically brought down a bottle of coconut oil. I brought it down in my suitcase because that's how my thing going to be cooked. So he's cooking. I say, yo, why not use the oil? He said, I have vegetable oil. It's made from vegetables. I said, poor boy, you don't know. What do you mean vegetable oil? He's thinking it's made from vegetables. No, it's not made from no vegetables. It's a deception. And so I tried to explain to him the benefits of coconut oil and he still didn't get it. But my point is, friends, some of these oils help to clog the arteries. So God knows this. That's why the coconut oil is the best oil. All day. Every day. All right? So there could be, be clean, no fat. Now, friends, this is where either you're going to conform or die. No blood should be in the meat. That thing had to be effectually drained. The last time I go to Publix or wherever I shop, and I'm, I'm a vegetarian, my family, we're on, we're, we're on a plant-based diet, you walk past the meat aisle. There's all kind of blood in that thing. That, that's not how it should be eaten. That's not how it should be. And the Bible says in Leviticus, Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether of fowls or of beasts. And the Jews know this. That's why they go kosher. Look it up. Go to a kosher Jewish store. They're all the way up. They're here in Boca. Kosher. It's a different kind of meat. You want to What at? It's meat. But it's different. 14 says, For it is the life of the all flesh, the blood. Of it is the life of thereof. Therefore I send to Israel, ye shall eat no manner of flesh of blood, nor the blood thereof. You'll be cut off. I remember when I used to crack those chicken bone, boy. When you, when you eat chicken bone, you crack the chicken bone. And you go, <laughs> that which was in the bone is what we call marrow. What is marrow? Blood. When I used to eat oxtail. Now you know how Jamaican eat oxtail, boy. When we eat oxtail, like that thing is white. <laughs> not to mention the fat and the blood it's a red meat friends we were killing ourselves I saw the light I jumped ship and you know I remember my brother was the first vegetarian I knew and I would go by his apartment and that time he used to drink soy milk no almond milk the one in the box I don't say you're Rasta man what is I mean I was on 2% milk I mean, you know, playing sports, so I wasn't no vegetarian. I mean, I tried to eat as healthy as I could. And you know, my brother was the first one I saw, and he said, yo, Aya, Rasta, don't eat blood enough? I said, what are you talking about? But now I, I, see, I see, I saw where he was coming from, friends. 
the blood, friends. I'm telling you, friends, when we cook the chicken, yeah, it's a clean animal. How it's killed. Is there fat in it? Is there blood? Friends, I'm telling you, you are putting yourself to an early grave. Heart attack, stroke is coming. And God says, I don't want you to die of these diseases. So he removed them, friends. There it is, friends. Three, three. I can give you some more, but this is, the, this is alone to force you to go vegetables. And you know what I'm saying, friends? Let me not jump the gun right now. Look what she says now, commenting now as they're going in the wilderness now, 40 years now. Same book. Look what she says now. Upon their settlement. Upon their settlement in Canaan, the Israelites were permitted the use of animal food. So when they came out of Canaan, out of Egypt now, God had tempered their diet. So God now said, listen, you can eat animal food, but there are some restrictions now. Please read now. But under careful restrictions, uh -huh. which tended to lessen the evil results. All right. The use of swine's flesh was prohibited. No pig. All right. As also of other animals and of birds and fish whose flesh was pronounced unclean. All right. A certain fish they couldn't eat. It had to have scales like janga or shrimp. Right. And all these catfish. Zero. No. Keep on reading. Of the meats permitted, the eating of the fat and the blood was strictly forbidden. Forbidden. Only such animals could be used for food as were in good condition. Uh -huh. No creature that was torn, uh -huh. that had died of itself, uh -huh. or from which the blood had not been carefully drained could be used as food. Friends, that beef in Walmart is not carefully drained. Matter of fact, you don't know how the animals... I'm going to show you next, next Lord's Day. Now, so, look what happened now. After flesh was introduced to man's diet now, after the flood, what happened to man's lifespan? Friends, look at this, friends. Look at this chart. It's in your handout. Right? Look at this now, friends. Before eating flesh is on my left. After flesh on my right. Adam... Right? 960. Shem. Am, Adam, 930. Shem. 600. Look at that, friends. Seth, 912. Afarax, 430. Enos, 900. Selah, 433. Canaan. Look, look, look at that. Ebar. Mahiliel, 800. Pegli. Pelgi. What a name. Right? Jared, 962. Ru. 239. Enos, 360. Sur, 330. Me Methuselah, 969. Namor, 144, 148. Lamech, 777. I like that one. Tara, 205. Noah, 950. Abraham, 175. What has happened, friends? Man's lifespan began to cut short. Now, not just man's lifespan. Noah, is 930. Near is 140. Not just in lifespan, but in stature. Because they were giants. That meat shrunk their stature and shrunk their life. Look what she says in spiritual gifts. Please read now. After the flood, the people ate largely of animal food. All right. God saw that the ways of man were corrupt uh -huh. and that he was disposed to exalt himself proudly against his creator and to follow the inclinations of his own heart. All right. And he permitted that long lived race to eat animal food to shorten their sinful lives. What else now? Soon after the flood, the race began to rapidly decrease in size and in length of years. Here it is, friends. Man, and today we're, sh we're shrinking. We're shrinking. So the diet restrictions lost now. So by the time we leave Genesis chapter 9, Joseph comes on the scene now. Follow me now, right? These people have gone down into Egypt. Look what happened now. After the Israelites moved into Egypt, what gradually happened to these diet restrictions? Psalm, David says, 105. 106, but they mingled with the, among the heathens and learned their works. They learned, remember, they had gotten onto Egypt. They were in Goshen. Once Joseph died, 
generations came on the scene and friends, they were forgotten. They were forgotten. So by the time Moses came to bring them out of Egypt, they, they were eating any and everything, blood, fat, bone, everything. Everything was upside down. Now, please read now. While they, while, while they sojourned in the land of Goshen. While they sojourned in the land of Goshen, they multiplied and became a great tribe or nation. All right. But their mingling with the heathen Egyptians was detrimental to their own religion. All right. There came a great apostasy or fallen away from the faith of their fathers. The faith once delivered to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Watch it now. In their contact with the pagan gods and false worship of the Egyptians, they lost their knowledge of the true God and his truth. They gradually adopted heathen customs uh -huh. and finally worshipped heathen gods uh -huh. and forgot the God of their fathers. All right, friends. Now, watch it now. By the end of the fourth generation, the Israelites were so dense to darkness and idolatry that they were but little better than the Egyptians themselves. While in Egypt now, they had learned to eat and practice the abomination of the heathens and had forgotten the dietary restrictions practiced by their fathers. One of the main purpose of the exodus of ancient Israel was to bring them back to the dietary lifestyle given to Noah. And so friends, the purpose of, one of the purpose of our spiritual exodus is to bring us back to that diet that God give, gave man before before the flood and after sin. Now, in the wilderness, what article of food did God purposely remove from their diet? God purposely took away meat or flesh. He took it away from their diet. And friends, what God did to them, he is seeking to do to you and I, friends. He wants to take away the flesh we are told, now this is a profound statement as we wind down. We are told this now. Please read now. The state of friends, you got to get this. Is, this, is, this is psychosomatic. Please read now. The state of the mind has largely to do with the health of the body. All right. And especially with the health of the digestive organs. All right, watch it now. As a general thing, the Lord did not provide his people with flesh meat in the desert uh -huh. because he knew that the use of this diet would create disease and insubordination. Friend, that, that, that's a bad word right there. Paul says in the unbelief, it produced stubbornness, ferociousness. You try to lead 2.3 million people. God remove that because he would have had an, an infirmary in the camp and rebellion. They were already rebelling already. Keep on reading now. In order to modify the disposition and bring the higher powers of the mind into active exercise, he removed from them the flesh of dead animals and gave them angels' food, manna from heaven. We're going to talk about manna coming up. So God removed flesh. Friends, again... One of the first things God did for me, I can't speak for you, when I was awakened to the reality of this message, one of the very first things God attacked viciously in my life was my appetite. Now, as an athlete, I was already on skin milk, which is no milk. I was already eating, um, you know, white meat, never ate red meat. So for me... It wasn't hard to go cold turkey. God was trying to, God, I just jumped the gun. And again, it's, it's, it's not just meat. It's also eating too late, eating between meals, drinking and eating. It's a, it's a, it's a very broad topic. But we want to focus on these lectures, especially on the dangers of meat, friends. Not here condemning you. But God wants to remove that from your plate. Friends, the whole world has gone vegetarian now. And some are doing it for the wrong reason. Paul says they practice temperance that they may get a trophy or go to Beijing or get a gold medal. But we do it so we can glorify God. Hitler was a vegetarian. 
But he ate that white sugar. That's why he killed so much Jews. You not hearing me? <laughs> he was a vegetarian. Was a vegetarian. And nothing is more repulsive than a wicked vegetarian. Lord, fit and wicked. We don't want that. Again, friends. So what then, friends, as we wind down? You know, God is seeking to bring us back to the original diet. He won't force you. As you're going to see, they rebelled. They ate. They bought God. No God. Me not in that kind of diet there. No. They fought and bought and God gave it to them. And David says in Psalms 106, he gave them their request and it brought, it brought leanness to their soul. We're going to cover it. We're told, friends, again and again, I have been shown that God is trying to lead us back step Look how God is good. Step by step. He's not going to overburden you. And I encourage people, you know what? For some of us, you can't go cold turkey. We got to be fair. Run your own race. You can't run my race. I told you I was getting ready to do the 13 and a half mile run in Bermuda, the half marathon. And one morning I was out running. And I saw this lady running hard. Now, you know me, the macho. I'm not going to let no lady outrun this brother. So, friends, I suck my chest in, form, and I'm running her down because I'm a macho man. I'm trying to, but you, you could tell she was a runner. Friends, Bermuda's a beautiful place, and when you came around the, the rock, there was a hill there. <laughs> I saw that woman climb that hill. <laughs> and poor me trying to, friends, I almost died. And just run your race now, man. She, you could tell she's used to that stuff. Man. I'm, you know what I'm saying? When it comes on to diet, step by step, run your race. Eliminate stuff by the grace of God. Now, you may not be able to go cold turkey, but God will leave. We serve a fear God, you know. We serve a fear God. He will work out a plan for you. But his job, his objective is to get you back to the original, right? She says, step by step. His original design, that man should subsist upon the natural products of the earth, friends, fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. Now, friends, lest you think this is some, some not ideology. This is serious. Now, friends, I told you, there's only two ways to get to heaven. You plan to go there, resurrection or translation. Now, the majority who go are going to resurrection, but only a small minority will go through translation. Now, I'll tell you something. The people who are at last translated, look at what she says the diet would be like. She says, please read, among those. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, uh -huh. meat eaten will eventually be done away. By and by, you got to get rid of it. it. May not be today or tomorrow or next week, but by and by, it has got to go. Right? She says now. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. Cease. No more meat, chicken, beef, chicken foot, chicken neck, chicken back, liver. None of that stuff. It will, it will eventually must cease. May not today or tomorrow, but by and by. Please read now. We should ever keep this end in view and endeavor to work steadily towards it. All right. So friends, here we see friends. Steadily. You know what God's ideal is. Run your race. Ask God to help you. You can't run my race. I'll run you. Run your race. God will lead a plan for you. But the ideal is to get off meat and get the veggies and the fruits and the grains and, and, and observe all the other laws to the glory of God. Right, please read now. She says, I cannot think that in the practice of flesh eaten, we are in harmony with the light which God has been pleased to give us. Uh-huh. All who are connected with our health institutions especially should be educating themselves to subsist on fruits, grains, and vegetables. Here it is, friends. That's it. That's it. Now, friends, we're going to pause there because that's enough. I've been talking now for over an hour. But I want to say this, friends. All of us have been invited to a marriage feast. Not the marriage. To the feast. And... There's a dress code. The robe of righteousness is required. No skinny jeans thing not going to work. 
No long frock, no long dress, no no big old hat. But you can't see. There's a, a, there's a robe that we must have on. The robe of righteousness, Christ character. Now, along with the robe, there is a dietary, follow me now, restriction that, that is placed upon us. Now, the, 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 the Bible says now, and he said unto me, Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Not the marriage. See, all of us can go, we, we can't go to the wedding, but we can go to the reception. Now, sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes everybody can go come to the wedding because the wedding is free. But the reception, you have to cater out each table. So the wedding is usually a whole lot of people. Joe Blow from around the corner. But when it comes to the feast now, it's not about, this is the other way around. The marriage was a few guests. <laughs> but the supper, all is invited. Now, this takes place in heaven. As soon as we get to heaven, we're going to eat. Then we're going to judge the saints a thousand years. Now, Ellen White was given a vision of this. And look what she saw. The table spread. We're going to be like, and friends, again, if we don't, by the grace of God, curb our appetite now, then we're going to be disappointed up yonder. As I close, may not be on your handout. It is? All right. Go ahead, please. Uh -huh. After we beheld the glory of the temple, we went out, and Jesus left us and went to the city. Soon we heard his lovely voice again saying, Come, my people, you have come out of great tribulation and done my will, suffered for me, Come in to supper, for I will gird myself and serve you. We shouted, Hallelujah, glory, and entered into the city. All right. And I saw a table. Here it is now. Of pure silver. Wow. It was many miles in length, yet our eyes could extend over it. Here's a table set, ready to eat. This is the reception now. We are the guests. We're invited. We got the dress code. Now... The menu. One menu, friends. Look what was on the table. Because that which was on that table is what must be on our table so the thing can harmonize. She says, I saw the fruit of the tree of life. Uh -huh. The manna, uh -huh. almonds, uh -huh. figs, pomegranates, grapes, and many other kinds of fruits. All right, stop here. That, you can read the whole thing, but that was what was on the table, friends. You're not going to have, you're not going to say to um, Seraph, come here. <laughs> well, I'm going to really not a fruit thing. You're not a chicken, you're not a chicken around there. Or you're going to say, boy, you know what, this, I'll take an SKV fish, please. They're going to be like, what? They know, they do, do, this is the menu. <laughs> get, get the menu. Friends, we have to now, by the grace of God, be seeking to get back to the diet that God gave man after sin before the flood. And friends, all things are possible. More and more every day people are gaining the victory over appetite. More and more people now are embracing the health reform in its totality and are living maximum lives to the glory of God. Won't you, friends, take hold of Christ's strength? He says all things are possible to him that believe it. And we have this to comfort us as our days. So shall our strength be. Day by day and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is yours gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasures, mingling toil with peace and rest. 
Every day the Lord himself is near me with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me. He whose name is counselor and power, the protection of his trial and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. As your days, your strength shall be in measure. This the pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith sweet consolation offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting, here to take as from my Father's hand, one by one the days of moment fleeting, till with, till with Christ the Lord I stand. Friends, let us take hold of Christ and his strength, and he can give you the victory over everything's Eve in your appetite. Loving Lord in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, that the wishes you have for, towards us is to prosper us, to give us an expected end for us to maximize our life and to live a life of longevity. Oh God, help us even now, Lord, to surrender our wills to you, to surrender our appetites to you, dear Father. Because of sin, it has been perverted. And we have moved so far from the restrictions that you gave to Noah that now we are eating. If you can catch it, you can eat it, Father. And so we are now plagued with sickness and death and decay, even among your people. Lord, help us to surrender our appetites and by your grace steadily to make our way back to that which is best for man. Fruits, nuts, grains, vegetables, along with the laws of health, temperance and plenty of water and exercise and godly trust and getting plenty of rest, dear Father, so we can glorify you in our minds and our bodies is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Friends, I hope you were blessed by this morning's message. You know, this is my, actually my second sermon for the morning. Um, I have been doing a week of prayer in England again. Um, the theme was the seven apocalyptic beatitudes. And so we went morning by morning and so forth. And so I rose early this morning to get up to um, go on. And listen, those Africans, I t they told me, not, we're not like the Americans. We like long sermons. And so friends, I kid you not, we spoke for about an hour and 45 minutes. And so I'm a little bit fatigued. And so what we're going to, we're going to forego the Evelyn's the Evelyn's, um, the Evelyn's study, and we are going to pick back up next Lord's Day and continue the study. So friends, again, you have the lessons review. I'm sure there are plenty of studies that are online you can actually um, resort to, but whatever you do, let's remember it's the Sabbath day, and may God help us to keep it holy. And when you can, go outside and get some walk, get some fresh air, and until then, Godspeed, Maranatha.